So, according to quantum mechanics, things are the way they are in our everyday macro world. Solid objects that stay still unless pushed or pulled, because these are the most probable, stable, and collectively averaged states of what are otherwise non deterministic quantum fluctuation. The more you zoom in, the more jittery in a seemingly random way things are. But as you zoom back out, the jitters average out to some stable value, like the speed of light, the mass of an object, its hard boundaries, and so on. This is called the classical limit, or quantum physics becomes classical physics. Mainstream physics assumes that quantum stuff, therefore, stays in the quantum realm because anything bigger, and it all averages out to the boring everyday world we know. Put another way, they don't believe that quantum phenomena exist at the macro scale in any significant way. But they easily could if the quantum fluctuations were ordered, made coherent. I mean, there's nothing that rules out a pencil on a table suddenly shifting left by an inch without anything pushing it. Quantum physics allows for that to happen, but the reason it doesn't is because, under random fluctuation conditions, the chance that it all its atoms would shift together an inch is extremely low. Physics says it's so low that it's virtually impossible, therefore it is impossible. They assume, however, that these fluctuations are truly random, so of course, probably would be low then. But the situation is similar to how when you turn on a radio, by default you just get static white noise. You might think it's nothing but a white noise generator. And according to the laws that govern noise, it's virtually impossible that it would just turn into music by itself. Surely. But extend the antenna and tune the radio, and you indeed get music using the very same circuitry that picked up nothing but noise just now. For someone who doesn't believe in radio stations or electromagnetic signals, they'd be amazed that this white noise generator is so improbably producing music. But it's not improbable if you believe that there can be something that influences the radio circuitry to replicate what's being broadcast. Similarly, quantum fluctuations can be random if it's just various quantum potentials influencing them. Quantum potential is a term that de Broglie and Bohm used to describe something beneath the quantum level that affects quantum fluctuations. De Broglie believed the quantum potential could change almost like temperature changing in water, which determines how the water behaves, liquid, frozen, or boiling. So in order to change how objects behave in a spooky way, like telekinesis, you have to alter them at the quantum level using something like a quantum potential field in order to cohere their otherwise random quantum fluctuations in an intelligent way. Now, we know that from experiments like those of Dean Radin, that consciousness can influence quantum phenomena. It's just that the effect is quite weak for ordinary people. But if you're not ordinary, if you are someone who has telekinetic powers, you can influence the quantum world in such a way to bend spoons and move objects with your mind. After studying metaphysics, occultism, mysticism, etc., I find that it's not that simple as simply having strong enough belief to bend reality. The issue is that when we speak about consciousness influencing the quantum world, are we talking just one's thoughts, or one's emotions, or conscious beliefs, or subconscious beliefs? What about the so-called etheric and astral bodies and energy fields, subtle energy, related to qui energy and prana? And if emotional or subtle energy, which emotions and what pattern or vibration of subtle energy? What about its quantity, intensity, and duration? As you can see, there are more factors involved, but I believe there are two main components to it. One, the spiritual conscious vibration level. Two, the amount, intensity, and duration. The first factor, vibration, in quotes, because it's more metaphor than a frequency in hertz, is measured on a scale between absolute higher divine consciousness and absolute lower illusion bound in ignorance. Emotions can be put on that scale with suicidal depression being on the low vibration level and love 
Ning Joy being on the higher end of that scale, but so can Subtle Energy with Vivifying Life Force on the high end, and Toxic Morbid Subtle Energy on the low end. Same with Conscious Thoughts and Subconscious Beliefs. On the high end is Enlightenment and Liberation, low end materialistic nihilism bound by highly entrenched self limiting beliefs. The second quantitative factor determines how much needs to be applied in order to shift, cohere the quantum fluctuations away from their default state, i.e., how much is needed to bend the laws of classical physics. The higher the vibration, the less quantity is needed. Quantity, not just in terms of effort and time, but also the density and amount of subtle energy emitted by your body soul, which acts as a close range conductive mediator of conscious influence. So vibration acts like permission level in an operating system. The highest vibration is like root access. With the root login and password, a few keystrokes can change everything easily. But if all you have is guest access, it takes a lot more time and tools to hack away and try to find an exploit. Average people have average abilities because they only have average vibrations and thus average access level. For whatever access level you have, you need to apply a corresponding degree of effort. For most people, telekinesis is pretty much impossible unless other factors intervene to create a miracle of sorts, like freak environmental conditions that affect the quantum potential so that less input is needed to produce a visible change. Therefore, the most effective telekinesis would involve a state of having 1. High vibration in thoughts, feelings, and conscious subconscious beliefs. 2. High intensity subtle energy fields, patterned in a way by your intentions to move objects. If it's patterned to make plants grow faster or heal someone of cancer, it's not the same pattern needed for bending metal spoons or moving a chair across the room. 3. More time of application, more repetition. If you have less of one of these, you need more of the other. Further, it's known that at least with spoon bending, you also have to be in a relaxed state of mind, a kind of zone where you're not trying super hard or focusing in a beta, beta brainwave state, but are in a more relaxed, accepting, almost childlike wonder state. Effort against resistance is a low vibration state of mind that validates the belief that it's an immovable or unbendable object like pushing the brakes while applying the gas pedal at the same time. Also, strong mental focus and hard concentration seems to amplify the quantum observer effect, where a wave function will freeze or collapse into a definite, tangible state when measured observed. Quantum physics treats it as an all-or-nothing thing, but experience shows there are degrees of it, and if you can shift into a state of mind that isn't that focused on one pinpoint of consciousness, Likewise, what you observe measure isn't as locked into a tangible state. Therefore, it becomes more fluid and thus susceptible to influence by the above-mentioned factors. And even more, spoon bending is found to be easier when done in a group, in an atmosphere of fun and with other people. It's as if their combined conscious, subconscious influences and their subtle energy fields amplify the ability to alter reality at, at the quantum level. As you can see, the behavior and properties of matter are influenced by a variety of factors corresponding to the various energy fields, thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and vibrational qualities of the people involved in collectively influencing it. If it's just you and your vibrations aren't on the level of some Jesus or Buddha, and if your mind has been programmed with self-limiting beliefs, then your remaining options are increasing subtle energy field intensity and putting more time and repetition into it. Increasing subtle energy fields, that's what a lot of Eastern and occult practices are for. Energy work, things like Kriya Yoga, Vipassana, Robert Bruce's New Energy Wave System, his book Energy Work gets into that. The system of J.B. Kerning, which German Rosicrucians used to become psychic. By intentionally moving energy around and through the body and stimulating various parts of the subtle energy system, they activate and grow. As they grow and build up a field of intense subtle energy around you, anything and anyone within that field becomes susceptible to its influence. If you consciously direct that field outward into a certain distant spot, that spot then comes under your influence, for good or for bad. 
A lot can go wrong in this process of building up your subtle energy field. Cancer, heart problems, aneurysms, disease. So yes, it can be dangerous in terms of energies going the wrong way or getting dammed up. And all that all affecting physical health. The quantum potential affects biological processes as well. Some people are born with the right qualities of consciousness and or subtle energy configuration to do telekinesis. Good examples are in the Chinese Journal of Somatic Sciences. Back in the early 80s, before the government cracked down on it, there was a parapsychology craze in China. Because China has such a large population under intense surveillance by the totalitarian Communist Party, they were able to find that tiny fraction of the population that had these abilities and bring them in for testing. Below are links and summaries to those journals. You can learn a lot from them. It appears that the quantum influencing allowed objects to be pushed into it and transported through a fourth spatial dimension as well. I suspect that this is telekinesis applied through the fourth dimension. And some examples suggest direct manipulation of reality itself, as if it were a computer program or a collective dream that can be rewritten. This is neo-level stuff. Hope you find it interesting. Tom. CIA.gov, blah, 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 blah. Queen Lee W.H. Trazaska, Scientific Approach to Qigong and So-Called Paranormal Phenomena, 1991. Paper summarizing some scientific research in China on Qigong masters or those with superhuman master-like abilities. Zhang Baoxing is one case study. He was a factory worker who in 1976 was discovered as being able to read letters inside sealed envelopes without opening them. He took part in numerous experiments throughout the late 70s and 80s and became an employee at the prestigious Institute of Space Medical Engineering Institute, SME, where his abilities were closely studied. Zhang demonstrated, including on high-speed film, being able to remove various objects from sealed bottles, burn cloth with the touch of his hands or fingers, return a torn piece of paper to its original condition, write messages inside a sealed envelope, and remove the hour, minute, second hands from a watch held inside someone else's clenched fist. He pulled out the watch hands through that person's skin. The watch, when examined, had a slit melted open in the glass, and the back was all scratched up, as if a file had been taken to it, yet the mechanism of the watch was still ticking. In another experiment, Zhang was asked to demonstrate removing various items sealed inside two bottles. The bottles were specially constructed to allow analysis of the items and bottles afterward to see if they were chemically or atomically altered in some way. Zhang was able to remove everything but a metal nut tied to a string that was connected to the lid of the bottle and refused to remove a radioactive sample and ampoule of liquor as he said he didn't like the way they smelled. But the vitamin C pills, two yellow tablets, pieces of superconducting material, some foil pieces all came out of the bottle through the walls or floor of the bottle. Qigong masters, when their physiological signs are measured, show they are neither aware nor asleep, but something beyond and between. Mr. Chow Chezhoun, was an ordinary factory worker who, after Qigong training, developed the ability to diagnose people's medical issues through psychic x-ray vision. Dr. Yan Exin, a Qigong master, demonstrated in 1986 the healing of a patient with multiple bone fractures. He talked to the patient, declared him cured, and subsequent x-rays showed zero trace of any fracture. He also demonstrated altering the vibrational spectrum Raman shift spectra of several samples monitored in a lab from 2,000 kilometers away. CIA.gov. Lepping, Za, and Tron McConnell, Parapsychology in the People's Republic of China, 1979-1989. Chinese research into ESP phenomena, they called it EFHB, equals exceptional functions of the human body, took off in 1979. To start with, over 500 scholars from 100 science centers joined a national effort to test hundreds of children with EFHB that were discovered around the country. 
Their findings were regularly published in China's scientific journal called Nature Journal. Some children were found to emit infrared light radiation that was modulated pulsed at audio frequencies. Audio is considered 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. But these were thought to be mere secondary effects of what was primarily being generated by these kids, which was qi energy. This research was opposed by a powerful social scientist named Dr. Yu Guangyuan, who was hotly debated the leading proponent of Psi research, Dr. Quine Exuan Sin. By, er, Dr. Yu wanted to halt all Psi studies because it went against the principles of Marxism, Leninism, and current scientific thought. Dr. Yu refused to attend any Psi demonstrations himself as he did not want to be deceived by trickery. In 1982, the Chinese government settled the matter by saying Psi research was not officially supported. But anyone who wanted to do it could, could continue. Just don't publish it in the national journals and magazines. Those who continued would not be able to use that work on their resumes as it was declared too controversial. Psi proponent Dr. Queen Exusen continued his research by creating the Space Medical Engineering Institute, SME. Since it was under military control, civilian academics like Dr. Yu Guang Yuan and its supporters had no power over it. SME became increasingly private in its operation and recruited the country's top psychics, including Zhang Baoxing, mentioned above. EFHB research from that point on continued nationally within the framework of Kui Gong research, as that was considered natural traditional medical treatment and hence not the parapsychology research that was banned. But years later, Kui Gong and hence EFHB informally and gradually gained a acceptance among Communist Party leaders. This paper also goes into greater detail about Dr. Yan Exin and his abilities. He would lecture before thousands of people while admitting Kui energy, and numerous people in the audience had miracle healings as a result. Bibliothecaplades.net Teleportation Physics PDF Air Force Research Laboratory Teleportation Physics Study the Air Force Research Laboratory sponsored an investigation into the theory and application of teleportation. It gets into various physics theories behind teleportation, but on fifth, page 55 also gets into PK, psychokinesis, forms of teleportation. The author mentions aerospace engineer Jack Hook and Colonel J.B. Alexander holding PK parties in which participants would bend metal objects effortlessly with their psychic powers. The objects were then scientifically analyzed. According to the author, the two most credible laboratory-tested examples of teleportation were those involving Uri Geller, see this link, where Geller made part of a crystal that was contained inside of a plastic capsule disappear, and the aforementioned Chinese parapsychology research. But the big deal about this link is that it was an Air Force study and mentions Psi PK powers. Archive.org, it's a CIA document. Chinese Journal of Somatic Science, Volume 1, Number 1, July 1990. Page 41 of document, Research into Paranormal Ability to Break Through Spatial Barriers. Song Kongzi, Li Exingao, Zhao Lingzong, Aerospace Medicine Engineering Institute. In 1983 and 1984, the famous psychic Zhang Baosheng was tested in a, various, in a series of very rigorous experiments. He was tasked with removing pills, photographic paper rolls, coiled wire, a metal washer, and coated colored sticks of plexiglass that could not be forged from glass-sealed bottles, glass-sealed tubes, and a wax-sealed plastic bottle. The glass bottles and tubes were sealed by heating and pinching together the opening, but leaving a tiny slit. The slit was much smaller than any of the objects that were to be removed. Somehow, the slit needed to be there for it to work, even though the objects were to emerge elsewhere from the wall. Since it was glass, there was no way to break the bottle and remove the contents and put it back together. So if the objects were removed, they could only be done so through paranormal powers. 
high-speed cameras at 400 FPS, 600 FPS, and 1000 FPS were running during the test at multiple angles. Results, objects were successfully removed, either whole, or in the case of photographic film, washer pills, plexiglass sticks, or partially in the case of the coiled wire. One of the pills was caught on high-speed film exiting the bottom corner of a glass bottle quickly, as fast as a human running. No sign of hole, slit, or damage was observed afterward on that part of the bottle. The high-speed frames show it partially emerging from the glass. Likewise, the photographic film roll is seen pushing against and emerging from the lower part of the bottle sidewall and land on the table surface all in less than one-fourth of a second. Speed was 30 centimeters per second. In the coiled wire experiment, the wire moved downward as the finger somehow pinched and dragged it through the glass from the outside. Only about five turns of the coil of wire were pulled through the glass before the experiment ended. But without PK power, this simply could not have been possible. In another series of experiments, page 32 of this document, Zhang Baoxing was tasked with moving objects out of and into a large sealed cabinet greater than one cubic meter volume. He succeeded in moving pieces of plywood, a calculator, a magazine, and a folder of papers one page at a time. However, most of the trials failed and he was straining a lot more than previous experiments. This shows there was a size limit to the container and size of objects. Archive.org CIA document. Chinese Journal of Somatic Science, Volume 1, Number 2, July 1991. Page 18 of document, Research in Restoring a Broken Leaf Through ESP, Wang Chongyuan, et al., Bai Queen Medical University. Lai Zanru, a 19-year-old female known to have paranormal powers, was tested on her ability to mend a ripped-apart leaf back together. This test was conducted three times in different conditions. In all three cases, she succeeded. The experiment process went as follows. A pitosporum leaf was torn in two pieces and placed into her hands. She held it in her fist and after 5 to 25 minutes, she gave notice that she felt something. Her abilities activated. When the hand was open, the leaf was back together. The leaf was then analyzed under microscopes to see what exactly happened. Analysis showed that not all parts of the tear were mended, but the parts that were, were mended perfectly. That is, the veins of the leaf and tissues were joined together perfectly, together as if nothing happened. The thinner parts of leaves were mended in greater concentration than the thicker parts, as if the process was aborted before finishing. But no doubt, the mended areas were healed at the cellular level. Archive.org, CIA document. Chinese Journal of Somatic Science, Volume 1, Number 4, August 1991. Page 43 of document. Preliminary Investigation of Implicit Space and Implicit Matter. Xiao Guangda, Wing Yahweh, Yan Lin. The authors propose that ESP, PK, has the ability to take explicit matter in explicit space. Explicit meaning ordinary world we know, manifested and excited into implicit matter in implicit space, hidden. They point to several examples of how matter behaves when in the implicit state. Little Hong was tasked with removing a letter from a sealed envelope. Eight minutes later, she said it had been transferred to the folds of a blanket nearby. Researchers checked, but did not see it. Another subject, Little Ping, said a letter was indeed in the blanket. They checked, and sure enough, it was there. Researchers theorized that the first time they checked, the letter was still in the implicit state, hence could not be seen, and manifested into the explicit state by the time the second girl pointed it out. In another experiment, a subject was asked to remove six cigarettes from a sealed pack. All six disappeared from the pack, and he was able to catch two of them. The others were still missing. A month later, in the same room during another experiment, he caught two more. The remaining two never showed up and were assumed to be lost in the implicit state. In a related experiment, all 20 cigarettes in a pack were tied together with string. The subject was not told this. When he attempted to extract just one, all 20 came out along with it, 
So even in the implicit state, the cigarettes maintain their physical form and connection. When the psychic sees the objects in their implicit state, it's done through clairvoyant vision. And for example, a cigarette might be a short, thick white light. Little Yun was known for being able to pluck flowers from a distance. One day, she saw her dad shaving and thought, why not use a knife to cut the flowers instead of just ripping them? The subsequent flowers showed signs of being cut, not plucked. Little Hung extracted a cigarette from a pack and made it appear inside a transparent plastic box, but when it appeared, it was standing on its end, vibrating, and giving off a humming noise. Researchers theorized that implicit matter has a certain vibration and frequency to it. Note, implicit matter like this might as well be a slip into a fourth spatial dimension. Archive.org, CIA document, Chinese Journal of Somatic Science, Volume 1, Number 5, November 1991. Page 19 of document, Study of the Phenomena of Energy Collection by the Human Body. Wu, Kuai Yao, Ping, Xiaoyuan, Zhao, Ronggu, Beijing Science and Engineering College. Goal was to test whether ESB can generate heat. Two unnamed psychics were tasked with raising the temperature of water inside a test tube. Different methods of temperature measurement were used. A millimeter wave detector was used to measure the radiation coming off the psychics as they did this. Test tube was filled with five millimeters of cold water. Psychic would hold test tube in hand and heat it. One of the psychics requested a towel to hold the tube with to avoid burning his hands. Results. In all tests, the temperature rose significantly the highest being 72.5 Celsius. When a non-psychic holds it, they can never get it above 30 Celsius. It took less than a minute for the attempt to reach its max. The psychic who requested the towel, the test tube, was felt by the researchers afterward and it was very hot, while the psychic hands were normal temperature. So some kind of energy was transferred into the water without the hand itself giving it off thermally. The psychic's emissions of microwaves, millimeter waves, dropped during the time when they were causing the water to heat up. 